brother. Y'all are all familiar with the Washington Monument, yep. that obelisk down in D.C. Anybody know how high it is? You'll be fascinated with this. 555 feet and one-eighth inch. The capstone is pure aluminum on top, a pyramid. And engraved on it is Laos Deo, which means praise the Lord. You can only see it from up there. But the nation is offering a praise to him and letting him see that over our land. We're not going to give up our land. Amen. 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 Aircraft pilots and so forth, <clears throat> and airships can see it, but I doubt how many of them read Latin and would know what is being said. But um, it, was, it was started in, uh, uh, where was it started? It weighs 81,120 tons in case nobody's going to tear that monument down. <laughs> The bottom stones uh, are white marble. Uh, it's cased with white marble from Maryland. But inside there's 188 stones from all over the world. Every state, every union, some organizations, and some foreign nations have stones that they dedicated to go in it. Uh, 188. Uh, so so uh, it, the bottom thickness of the walls are 15 feet. There's an elevator shaft in the center. It's hollow, you know. You can go yeah. up 500, the, the 500 foot level on the elevator, or you can go 898 steps. I'd like to have done that in my youth. I didn't. It's probably closed to the public now, I'll just bet, because of a terrorist threat or something, you know. But uh, it has four windows at the top, uh, two on each side, so you can get a good view of Washington, D.C. if you were up there. And uh, at the, the width of the, the stones at the top are 18 inches, so it's tapered, you know. Uh, they started it, and I wrote down when they started it. Um, and I can't see, I can't read my writing. Join the club. Uh, July, it was, the cornerstone was laid July the 4th, 1848. But they didn't finish it until 1884 because of the Civil War and political disruptions and so forth. They went up halfway. You can see where they stopped at the halfway point. It's a different color uh, slightly yeah. from there on up where they finished it. And uh, I was thinking to myself, uh, they, uh, uh, when they finished it, the official dedication was February the 21st, 1885. 44 years later, Doc Bean was born. He was born in uh, February the 17th, 1928. And uh, uh, you were March the 23rd, uh, 20. 1924. So his was, your, yours was 40 years after you were born, 40 years after they dedicated it, and he was born 44 years after. Uh, that, that's fascinating. They're these two old monuments. <laughs> that are, that are, now, now, monuments need to be hollow inside <laughs> so that they can put donuts in there. Oh, good. And chocolate stuff. Oh, yeah. And the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 I'll tell you something else that's amazing about that. Yes. When I was 18, almost 19, I ran from the bottom to the top. Hallelujah. Holy you were in good shape. Went up and down the quick. Amen. Uh, the, the trowel they used to lay the cornerstone, George Washington had used that same trowel to lay the cornerstone of the capital of the U.S. Uh, just interesting little facts and so forth. Um, the... Uh, the message you gave this morning about our scars and our wounds and how they affect us or can affect us. Well, they do affect us uh, all our lives. I remember uh, seeing my daddy in the living room of the house when we lived on the Clifton Springs Road and, and uh, mom and daddy and us boys built the houses that we lived in. Uh, we were step fetch it's the kids, but but Daddy was a right good hand with a carpenter, and, and Mother was an excellent stonemason with rock and cement, and, and they just worked all the time. But I remember seeing my little old Daddy when he was about 65, standing in the living room of our house, and he had an old tintype in his hand, and he's standing there leaning over and looking. I've told you this before. He's standing there, and he has the most solemn expression on his face. 
and uh, I started to go into him. I was a teenager at this point in time, and I started to go into him, and I, I thought, ooh, I don't think I better. But he saw me out of the periphery of his vision, and he said, Kenny, come here. You've never seen your grandfather, have you? That was his daddy. And I could see and knew in my heart and my mind, I just looked and then backed away, this little frail old man standing in that picture. He was saying to daddy, why didn't you love me? Because he had abandoned him when he was an infant. And he's 65 years old, and he's wondering why daddy didn't. Now he's settled, he's in heaven, he knows. Amen. But he carried that his whole life. And you and I do too. Many scars we carry our whole life, lives. And, and uh, I wanted to, to bring you some spiritual insight into that, the why of that, and uh, the value of that, and the way out of that. And uh, just as David was sharing this morning, there was this little boy, and he was um, thought to be uh, not real bright. I guess he was seven, eight years old. And uh, sometimes the world's standards of bright mean absolutely zero. Amen. It means nothing. The only thing it means is you and God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, Carl Sagan was said to be a genius. But let me tell you right now, when it comes to value to mankind, he was zero. He was an atheist. Mm -hmm. A genius? How would you like to go to hell and be the biggest fool there? <laughs> the smartest. Because that, you know, that be wouldn't that be corruption? Anyway, this little boy was he and his daddy had top ground up on the mountain, and the folks down in the valley have bottom ground, have better ground. And somehow, reason for some reason, because of that difference, the people in the bottom look down on the people on the top. <laughs> and so they, they do, though. And so Daddy and he were farming this wheat field. I don't know where Mama was or, or, or if she was living, but they were farming, and, and he was hoeing, and, and uh, it, it wasn't a good crop, but it was, it was the best they could do. And they could look off in the valley and see all their friends and neighbors down there working their rich bottom land. And it was on the coast, near the coast. And the, the, the little boy said, Daddy, Daddy, pulled on his sleeve and said, Daddy, what is it, son? What is it? Look, the ocean just withdrew. And the little boy said, Daddy, it ain't supposed to do that, is it? And Daddy said, no. Teacher said, that's an earthquake causes that, Daddy. Daddy said, yeah. Teacher said, when it goes away like that, it's going to come back much higher, Daddy. Daddy said, yes. Daddy, what do we do? We don't have time to go down there and get them. And Daddy said, I don't know, son. I don't know. The little boy said, Daddy, you remember when you told me not to play with matches? He starts striking matches and going down the wheat field and lighting up the wheat. The people in the valley saw the smoke and came running. The Daddy stood there and looked at his boy. You're setting the wheat field afire? They came running. When the wave, the, t the tidal wave came, they were up on the hill fighting the fire. There was one genius little boy Amen. who knew how to save a whole bunch of people by destroying something. The scripture tells us that God's ways are higher. We've sang in that lovely song, all of them were lovely, but that last one there, you know, uh, talked in, in mysterious ways. That God's going to make a way. Amen. When, when there is no way, Amen. God's going to do it. Yes. You and I ask him to do it and pray for him to do it. He's going to do it. Oh, yeah. yes. And uh, so I thought you'd enjoy that little story of how through destruction, a whole bunch of people were saved. Would you open your Bibles, please, to Proverbs 28? <clears throat> Proverbs 28. And when somebody say it out loud, please. 
Proverbs 28. Add up. Thank goodness. And verse 26. Verse 26. Proverbs 28, verse 26. Proverbs 28, verse 26. Amen. You're already looking more intelligent. Let's hope we don't have to burn the church down for God to be able to move. There's a fire in here. Praise God, I got it in me. Amen. Woo! I didn't have it when I came in this morning. Not in the same way I got it now. Hanging around you reignited something. Amen. Listening to your words reignited something. I'm telling you, it's good for me to come to church. Absolutely. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. fool. When I was a little tyke, and, uh, and, the, and Rachel, this dates me, but you won't understand this because I'm too, that much older than you. But the planes didn't have one wing. They had two wings. They were called biplanes. One wing was stacked up over the other wing. And in between was a little round fuselage. And, and, and those little planes could do flips and things. You don't see that in jets. I mean, they take the whole sky to turn flips and so forth. But those little planes were acrobatic. They were open cockpit, and they'd come over our area because there was a little airport. Now the Atlanta airport was a little country airport in those days. And, uh, and they would dirt strip, and they'd fly in and go up and flip and so forth. And, and I knew they were open cockpit because they would be sitting there, and we'd go up to the airport and watch them. And uh, I was, I'm not trying to teach you anything now at this moment. I was down there and I'd say, fall out, you fool, fall out. <laughs> well, Mom and Daddy, being good old Methodists, knew that you weren't supposed to call anybody a fool. That's right. Raka, danger of hellfire. You're not supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. And so here I am, six, seven, eight, certainly not 20. Uh, no, I was, I was small, yelling, fall out, you fool. And... I felt this, pre you ever had this presence hovering around you just behind you that you knew you were fixing to get it? <laughs> and there stood my mom and daddy, and they must have been 20 feet high. Well, I was only this high there, you know. And, uh, and on those types of circumstances, they get taller. And uh, daddy had his <laughs> belt in his hand, and he started preaching. And you're not supposed to call anybody, and boy, I got dusted. When Daddy spanked my bottom with his belt, dust flew everywhere. <laughs> I'll bet yours did too. And so so uh, I, I had a terrible dread after that of calling anybody a fool. But God said it here. I didn't say it. I'm merely reading his word. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be Delivered. Amen. Walk wisely then, obviously. Amen. Amen. Now would you go with me to uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, for a curious scripture. Hebrews 11. Say it out loud. Hebrews 11. Oh, you're proud of me. You're proud of me. Hebrews 11, verse 35. Lori, aren't they getting bright? Uh -huh. The very essence and opposite of fools. <laughs> they, they are getting so intelligent Hebrews right in front of me. <laughs> Hebrews 11, verse 35. I think I'll start with verse uh, 33. Who through faith, this is called the faith chapter. It's, it's talking about a lot of people who operated in faith in the Old Testament. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, Obtained promises. Stopped the mouth of lions. It was Daniel when he went in the lion's den. It was his faith. He wasn't worried. God shut the... He just, they, he just had soft pillows to lay on. You ever held a kitty cat and listened to it purr? Oh, yeah. Isn't that, doesn't that give you a calming sense? Imagine if that thing weighed 1,500 pounds and you're laying on it and it's purring. And it's a flesh eater. Didn't bother Daniel. Stop the mouth of lion. Verse 34, quench the violence of fire. You know, there is a violence to fire. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, two of our homes burned. Uh, both of them were arson. And, uh, and it really scarred mama and daddy. 
uh, and I saw my mama and daddy deteriorate. Uh, daddy had been strong all his life and mother was a powerful person too and I watched them wither. The first one was bad enough, but the second one uh, really wiped them out. And, uh, and so what did they do? Well, they weren't fools. They turned to Jesus. They got baptized with the Holy Ghost, got on fire, and I'm telling you, they finished the course better than they started it. Amen. They started it being loving God warriors, bringing people to the kingdom. Mm. Woo! My goodness. Mama sent me these little cassette tapes by a crazy preacher by the name of Kenneth Copeland yeah. and uh, uh, yes. Kenneth Hagin yeah. and uh, Catherine Kuhlman. And, and uh, I've listened to them and listened to them and laugh and cry and weep and listen to them over and over again. And, and Mama started getting to me. And then she made me go to her church. Well, what are you going to do? You tell your Mama, no, you're not going to church. I'm a grown man now. I go down there to visit her and drug me off to this church. And the people were crazy. <laughs> they were bad as you. <laughs> I mean, they shout and praise and lift their hands and they were... They were happy. Don't you know you're not supposed to be like that in church? You're supposed to be morbid, long-faced. This is serious business. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you play on a slippery creek bank long enough, Kenny Copeland said, and you're liable to slide in. And I played on the slippery creek bank of the Holy Ghost and slid right in. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong. Out of weakness were made. You remember when Paul said, Lord, deliver me from this thorn in the flesh? Remember that from 2 Corinthians? And, and God said, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, Paul said, I'll glory in my infirmities. He'd gotten to a place that we longed to get to. Yes. Mm -hmm. When I've got a scarf, it reminds me of some bless God, I'm going to glory. Because if i got a scarf, I'm still alive. Amen. Yes. You want me to show you my scar? <laughs> used to be when I'd go to the hospital and, and uh, visit with elderly women. Uh, and then the, early in the ministry, I, Darlene, I had a weak stomach. And uh, my daddy did too. Prize fighter had a weak stone. And uh, and uh, little old women wanted, you want to see my ruddy sutures in the drainage come in? And I'm telling you, and you, you can't just turn away. I mean, you've got to look like it. Oh, <laughs> listen. listen. I stopped going before uh, until after lunch. <laughs> I mean, because you don't want lunch after that. But... Uh, but they were they weren't they weren't ashamed at all to show you their their runny sores and them uh, uh, <laughs> out of weakness were made strong. I developed a strong stomach. Waxed valiant in flight. Waxed valiant in flight. You can be brave and flee. Man, I'm brave when it comes to sin. I run from it just as fast as I can carry. Hallelujah. I don't want anywhere around it. Yes. Amen. Turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Verse 35. This is where I wanted to go with you. Women receive their dead raised to life again. Remember the Shunammite woman or, or the old prophet raised from the dead? Remember that? Mm -hmm. There's something better than that. There's something better than that. That's right. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Did you know there's a better resurrection? Resurre there's a better, a better covenant promise yes. than being raised from the dead? Right. Amen. No wonder Paul could say I've wronged no man. Yes. He hadn't. The Paul that had did that died on the Damascus yes. road. That's right. Yes. Right. Amen. He'd already experienced a better resurrection. Yes. If you yeah. read about his chronicle of shipwrecked and beatings and stonings and so forth, you look at that and you tell me the man didn't have any physical scars. He had to have him all over him. Yeah. Didn't he? Didn't he? Yeah. Amen. And it meant nothing to him. I glory in my infirmities. Amen. I, I, since I had my knee replaced over on this side, uh, it had gotten... Uh, 
uh, inflamed before. Dale was so courageous he went and had his, and I followed Dale, so I had mine done. And then Dale was even more courageous, and he had the other one done, and I chickened out. <laughs> but I had one of them done. I let him be the hero for two of them. And, and so, uh, but, but it was fat before. Uh, don't pay any attention to the medicine. Uh, it, it's still fat. It stays kind of inflamed and a little puffy. And I can't bend it as far as the other one. You know, it just, it's, it's swelling tissue restricts motion. Yes. You understand that, don't you? Yeah. And, and so I decided, and I found a word in, in Gospel of Luke uh, that, that's in the Bible only one time. And it, it, it means, it, its meaning is uh, uh, no inflammation, mm -hmm. no swelling of the digits. And I started claiming that. And I'm claiming that over my knee and my toes and any other part of me, my anatomy. That, and I'm claiming that physically. But on the other side of that, I want to swell in the spirit. Amen. I want the Lord to grow me. Amen. I want to be bigger than this little, uh, I used to be six foot. I'm 5'11 or 5'10 and a half now. I'm going down this way. I want the Lord to raise me up and fill me with his power yes. so that when I step on the scene on behalf of somebody that's demon oppressed, the demons flee. Yes. I don't. They get sick at their stomach, not me. Amen. That we do battle and in the name of Jesus Amen. and for his glory, we, we get a victory. Yes. Praise God. A better resurrection. Missionaries, that look beautiful little Jasmine. Barbara, didn't you say we'd raise, what, four, five, six hundred dollars for her last Sunday? Praise God. God bless you for that. And, and send her back. And, and we'll continue. A tithe of the church goes to her ministry. That, what she's doing is dangerous. Yeah. Missionaries have always been in danger. She's over there with the Islamics. And they're not the sweetest people in the world. Oh, you shouldn't say that. I know some Christians that are almost as mean as some Islamics I know. <laughs> you don't get baptized with the Holy Ghost and become instead re having a lot of rigid religious ritual and ceremony. You're going to get hard and mean too. Yeah. The only way you can get softened up is with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So we, we have these scars. And, and uh, the Bible teaches us in Philippians, forgetting those things that are past. Yes. I press on toward the yes. mark of the high calling. Amen. And yet, I, I'm not disagreeing with God's word. There's a place and a way where Jesus, he kept his scars for a reason. To glorify the Father. Thomas, Put your hand in my side. My Lord and my God. The scars needed to be visible. Yes. I am not drawn nearly so much to pretty people. Mm. Let me explain before you jump to a conclusion. Okay. Who are great orators or great musicians or have this magnetism about them. Their personality is overwhelming and, and they just look like they have never been touched by fire mm. or hurt. Mm. And to hear them, they've got it all together. I'm, not, I'm drawn to people like my daddy mm. who had his wounds and his frailties and still loved God all the way. Amen. Amen. That had his, had his weaknesses and so forth at, like the apostle did. And it didn't bother him at all. He just went on in God. Amen. I mean, if you've got it all together, physician healed us. Why'd you come in here if you didn't need something from God? That's right. Amen. 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 We do have wounds. We do have scars. But God promised a better resurrection. Yes. Amen. It, do you remember little Joseph when his brothers betrayed him, yeah. sold him into slavery? Mm -hmm. And, and, and they took him down to Ishmaelites and took him down in there and sold him to Potiphar. And Potiphar believed his wife over good Joseph and had him thrown in prison. He interprets some dreams for the, the butler and the baker and they go off and forget him. And, and one finally remembers and calls, the, is it the butler, calls for the, the Pharaoh to bring Joseph out of the prison. Joseph has a good sense to bathe and shave and 
make himself presentable, right. goes in into Pharaoh, and then the brothers come. Genesis 39. We'll open your Bible to Genesis 39. Say Genesis 39. Genesis 39. Yes. 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 I'm so proud of you. I knew you could do it. Genesis 39. Telling you, you're the smartest people in the whole world. I'm going to start at verse 20. Genesis 39. 39, 20. 20. Genesis. 39, 20. You understand that what I'm saying is sometimes God has to burn the field down to save somebody else. Yes. Did you get that? Yes. Sometimes we have to go through some stuff we go through. So we have to go through, Marsha, some stuff we go through or we'd never be useful to anybody else, including God. Yes, yes He loves Marsha. Yes, he performed his word over and healed her of cancer. Yes. Now she can tell other people that he heals of cancer. Right. Amen. Yeah. And while he'd have done it just for you, he did it for more than just you. Right. He expects you and me and Barbara healed of cancer. He expects us to tell others about that. Amen. And it hurt when we went through that, didn't it? I remember to this day. Well, can't you just forget that? I'm not even sure I'm supposed to. Uh, have you ever eaten tenderized steak? Yes. Yes. Do you know what I mean by tenderized? Yes. Pounded. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then they soak it with this stuff. Yeah. And this stuff marinated, isn't that what they call it? Marinated. Uh -huh. And this stuff you marinate it in yeah. makes it softer. Yes. And you're going to put that in your stomach. <laughs> you ever wondered, I mean, wait a minute, it, it, that, that might not be good for your stomach lining, you know, if it'll, but, but it, it, it tastes better when it's been tenderized. You taste better when you've been tenderized by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Bless God. You're a better servant when Amen. you've been, yeah, you need a few scars. I hope you get some before you get out. When I'm, just, I, I'm sorry, I went, went the wrong way with that, didn't I, Lord? 3920, and Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison a place where the king's prisoners were, bound. were, bound. are you looking? Mm -hmm. Are you reading the word? Bound. bound. The prisoners were bound. They were. What does that mean? They didn't have freedom of movement like they had before they were bound. Would you say? Right. And he was there in the prison. Remember Paul and Silas in jail? Yeah. yeah. Remember what they did? Yeah. Sang. Sang. Praise. Sang praises to God, stretched Praise. out in the chain, just sang. And God shook the banisters of heaven, caused all the cell doors to fall open, and the Philippian jailer got out. Why do you allow him to get beat? To get the Philippian jailer and his family. The Lord is willing to allow us to go through some things that we wouldn't choose to go through. Come on now, you're you're you got you're not a fool. If you had the choice, would you go through anything unpleasant? No. And you'd end up being absolutely useless to the Lord. Amen. You won't go through anything when you're in heaven, but this is hardly that. I, I'm not trying to take faith out of your heart. I'm trying to get you to see that sometimes God has to turn down, yes. burn down the field to get the people in the valley to come up to the top of the hill. Yes. Amen. But the Lord, verse 21, but the Lord was with Joseph. Is God bound? No. But is he, is he let, did he leave Joseph? Joseph knew he was bound, but God was with him. Amen. And he knew it. And Paul and Silas knew it. And I know it. Every day I look in the mirror, I see some more splotches on my skin. I went to Dr. Hatcher on Friday. And, and uh, I looked at him. I said, have you seen? And he said, Ken, don't, don't start on that. He said, I got them all over me. I said, I noticed you've been aging right in front of my eyes. He said, yeah. Yeah, you have too. He said, you, you need to lose a little weight, Pastor. I said, yes, sir. And I looked at him. I said, he said, don't say it, Ken. I know it's hanging over the belt too. So we both had a good time. Neither one of us are exactly perfect specimens, but we both love the Lord. Amen. Glory. I just wanted to disarm you before you got started there with that. 
But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor, glory to a prisoner in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison and wheresoever they, they, they and whatsoever they did. I can't read. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. Verse 23. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he did and the Lord made it to prosper. Later on in Genesis, the brothers come that had sold him and betrayed him and Joseph saw the necessity for the burning down of the field. Not my, my paraphrase. Joseph said, you meant it for bad. But God meant it for good. Amen. His ways are higher than our ways. He chooses some things to let us, let us. He didn't author it. Don't blame it on him. But to let us go through in order for us to be able to glorify him better than we ever could have otherwise. Amen. So I say praise God for the scar. Don't, David's right. Don't dwell on him. Don't let him hinder you. Indeed, let him propel you. Praise God. Are you listening? Yes. Yes. Amen. Last one is Philippians 3. Philippians 3. Thank you. One <laughs> voice of wisdom sounded out. You get an extra donut. <laughs> Verse 13. Verse 13. 13. 3, 13. Philippians 3, 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing, isn't that beautiful that he says that? Mightiest preacher of the Old Testament, apart from Jesus, wrote half to two-thirds of the New Testament. And he says, I don't say that I've... I mean, he did everything you could do as a man. As a former man, a uh, born-again man, his, inward, his, in, his outward man had killed people. His inward man had never killed anybody. He brought them to life. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing, one thing, one thing I do. Yes. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Forgetting the failures. Forget the failures. That's what you're supposed to forget. Forget the times that you embarrassed yourself in God. Forget those. Not the wounds you've been through necessarily. Mom and Daddy always remembered the fires. But you see, they replaced it with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's a better fire. Amen. Verse 17. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so, as ye have us for an example. You and I are supposed to be examples. Yes. Did you know that? Yes. Amen. All scarred up and wounded. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I got a fresh mole right here uh, last month. <laughs> I noticed it when I ran my razor over and whacked it. And, and I looked in the mirror and I, another one? I bargained with it. Another one? <laughs> And you know he didn't pay any more attention to that than he had any of my other complaints. I filled up my complaint roster several times over. I don't think he pays a whole lot of attention to my complaining anymore. By the way, he don't care for your grumbling either. You'll do better with God if you cut out the grumbling. Amen. Yes, amen. And certainly eliminate the, the backbiting and the squabbling. Amen. Amen. I mean, you're just going to do better. Amen. Would you stand to your feet? If you're able. I've enjoyed this time with you this morning. Amen. Yes, ma'am? Can we pledge allegiance to the flag? Oh, yes. Just as soon as we're done. Yes. We'll, well, well, let's do that right now. We're going to pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Well, there you are. <laughs> Hand over your heart. Feet together in the military discipline. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, 
one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Amen. Now, I'll stay standing and, uh, and let's pray. Amen. Somebody's been having pain. You can look at me for a minute. Right in this area of your back. Uh, I'm not talking about long-term pain from times before. I'm talking about a fresh awareness and sensitivity in here that's really bothering you. Who is that? Two of you. Anybody else? The only reason God calls out something like that is to heal it. There's no reason. He's not mocking you. Amen. And so we rebuke that condition in Jesus' name. Amen. To the Lord be the glory. Amen. To the Amen. Lord be the glory. That doesn't have to continue in order for you to have a scar to be a better witness. That doesn't have, he wants that stopped now. So Amen. he's going to praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Someone else is having a difficulty with the right foot, the right ankle specifically, and the toes. And it's, it's, I'm not talking about long-term thing. I'm some, something that's just started. The right foot. Who is that? You too. Okay. Okay. Anyone on this side? Has Justin's right foot been doing good? Annie's yeah. right foot? Her foot. Annie? Well, I'm going to say so. <laughs> Claim it. Amen. Claim the healing of it. Right now. Right now? Right now? Right now? Yeah. Say, say this out loud. Say it with them. I claim healing for my right foot in Jesus' name right now. To God be the glory. Amen. Father, bless your children right now. Lord, multiply your blessings to them. Father, sanctify our, all our imaginations and thought processes. Bathe them in the blood of Jesus. Forgive us for every given place to the enemy for allowing him to tempt us in those ways. And seal us with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, Father, fill us all with your Holy Spirit right now. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. I have church tonight at 6 o'clock.